happy, happy new year. We here to do it. We gonna do it. All the books I DNF'd in 2021. Let's just go. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Nakia. Welcome to my channel. As I said, and as you've seen by the title, we're gonna talk about every book I did not finish in 2021. And I will tell you now, I have over 20. <laughs> and considering I only read about 48 books during the year, that equals a lot of DNF. So like I said, let's just get into it. Now, I got me a little champagne because you know, let's make this video a little more fun, a little more toasty. Like I said, we're still toasting the new year. I know we're into the second week of January, I think second week but we still gonna say it this is the last time i'm gonna say it but uh, uh let me explain how i'm gonna do this i am going to start with my most recent dnfs because those are the ones that are probably the most fresh in your mind and then we're gonna work our way all the way back to january 2021 because you probably have forgotten about those by now and i also forgot i had to go dig them up and i'm not gonna go into detailed synopsis it says with these i'm just gonna tell you the title author maybe something quick and from what i can remember about why i dnf'd it so let's do it all right, in the month of December, I actually have one that I just realized is gonna be a DNF. I don't think I'm gonna to return to this book, but we shall see. So you're getting a spoiler for my December, January wrap up, but I am talking about Secret Santa by the authors here, something Schaefer. <laughs> see how well prepared I am? This book, I was so excited to read. I didn't get to read it last Christmas, but it says it's The Office Meets Stephen King. So I was like, ooh, okay intriguing it's supposed to be about this, about this woman that gets this secret santa gift at work and all of a sudden things start happening to her co-workers and she knows it's related to the gift and then she has to figure out who gave it to her that was what it said i just went through a lot this christmas with reading i just was not in the mood for a lot of the books on my tbr and this was one i kept trying to force myself to read it and i just was not into it and i realized it was just too much about her job at this publishing company i didn't sign up for that wasn't interested didn't even care about her enough and and the office part of the description wasn't it funny. I don't remember laughing once. I really don't. I was trying to think back. Stephen King. No, I got none of that. Like I said, I just wasn't into it. It was also supposed to be 80s vibes. Wasn't getting that either. So I had put it on hold saying, you know, maybe I'll come back to it next Christmas. But I just got too many things that I'm piling up for this December 2022. So I don't know if it's going to make it back onto the list. So for right now, I'm saying it's most likely a DNF. Let's move on. Future Nakia here. Excuse any noise you may hear. I've said this before, there's construction going on where I live, but I completely forgot the books that I DNF'd in November. I'm so sorry. I DNF'd the fantasy book Seasons of Albedone. This was a short novella that I threw in in November to give me a little variety, but it just ended up not being my cup of tea. It was boring for me. I just wasn't feeling it. I was looking for some magic and you know, the fantasy stuff you hear about, but it was just walking and talking, not my thing. And then we got to a part where some romance was creeping in. I was like, nope, nope, I already didn't sign up for this. I don't like that it's boring and we got romance coming in. So no, 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 we're done here. I ended up DNFing it at 13%. Then my other one was so disappointing because it is a series that I was into and it was the last book of the series. And I'm speaking of Binti Night Masquerade, the third book in the Binti series. And unfortunately, I did not finish it. The first one was just so good. I loved it. I've talked about it so many times on this channel. It made my best books of 2021 list. I read it all in one sitting. The second one was still good, not as good as the first. And the third one just wasn't it for me once again. It was too much walking and talking. It was boring and I just was not enjoying it. I even switched to the audiobook and that wasn't working. So you know there's a problem. So I uh, threw in the towel and DNF'd it on page 28. So unfortunately I did not finish the series. But now there you have it. Everything I DNF'd in the month of November. Now back to the regularly scheduled programming. Now in October, oh, my favorite month of the year. But it was disappointing for me reading wise. I think you also see this in June, which is my birthday month. I put too much on it in October. I just wanted all the perfect, scary Halloween themed books. That was another part of my problem. I was really trying to go for books that all took place on or around Halloween. And 
Let's talk about the ones I DNF'd. I have my notes here. First up in October, we have Trick or Treat by Richie Cusick, Tankersley something. <laughs> I ended up DNFing this book because it did not give me the Halloween vibes that I thought I was getting. You called the book Trick or Treat for God's sakes. But there was no trick or treating. There was barely any Halloween vibes. I read a bit of the preview beforehand and it was talking about the cold air and the autumn leaves. And so I was like, oh, this is going to give me all the atmosphere I need for fall. There was a bit of that. But the story was too much about these teenagers. It was the main character and her stepbrother. And it was a mystery with their house of some other teenager that was killed there and them trying to figure out that. The parents were gone away, by the way, on their anniversary trip. But also they were at school and school drama with other teenagers. I don't care about this high school drama. I don't. And so I was just like, I'm not getting any Halloween spooky vibes. None of that. So DNF. Then next I picked up Monster by Diane Ho, another vintage horror YA book. This one also was too teeny boppery for me. I wasn't in the mood. I was just like, not another teen book. I don't want to do this. So same reason. I don't remember what the plot was. I just know when I started reading it, it was too much teen stuff. Wasn't here for it. Then I tried some novellas and these are by an author that you all should be familiar with. Maybe not, but Keelan Patrick Burke. I read his novella House on Abigail Lane and I loved it. I talked about it before. It was one of my favorite horror books of 2021. So I thought I would like these novellas, Blanky and Sour Candy, but I started reading those. Wasn't here for either one of those. I know, I know. So many of you love Sour Candy. Like I said, I just, when I started reading it, I just did not care about this domestic situation. I just don't like domestic books. And I'm a, I'm a mom. I just don't want to read about people and their kids and just like parents and no. And same thing with Blanky, another couple dealing with stuff with their baby or child. I just didn't want to read it. Wasn't interested. The writing wasn't grabbing me. None of it. And then I was like so excited about this book because it was the second book in a series and I loved the first book cozy horror mystery book <laughs> and I am talking about murderously sweet and it is the second book in the pumpkin hollow mystery series the first book I love because it had humor and it was the neighborhood gossip and you know with the murder mystery the woman that was killed was not liked by anybody and who did it because everybody can't stand her second book the person who was murdered, I did not care about him. He was also in the first book and I didn't care about him in the first book. And then, of course, there's romance. There's always romance in these cozy mystery books. But we get a little more of the romance in the second book. And it was like kind of, you know, teased in the first one. So it didn't bother me. But in the second one, it was going too much more into it. And I just ugh, didn't care. So I DNF'd it. Then I tried another horror book. This is a short story collection. Dead Leaves by... I don't remember the name of the author. You see it here on the screen, but this is another one. It just so happened that the first story was a teen story. I was just like, are you kidding me? I think this was the last one I tried that month. And I was like, we're done here. First story was about some teenage girl who was all on her phone and social media. And this was current. So, you know, her on the phone with her friends and to my boy, she like, no, my battery's about to die. Oh. A little technical difficulty. Battery died, but we're back. <laughs> And then lastly, in October, I knew I was going to want to read something that was different from, you know, horror books. And so I decided to pick up Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. And I was so looking forward to this book because so many people said it was good, but it just was not my thing. I did not like the writing style. It was supposed to be about this bank robber who escaped the police and runs into this open house and takes people hostage and it's supposed to be like all these people unravel and have secrets and stuff i didn't get to any of the unraveling didn't get to the bank robbery situation there was a cop in interviewing some lady it was just too frantic and all over the place it was just a mess i couldn't deal so i dnf'd it at page 14. you know it's bad if i don't get that far all right in august i only had one dnf and that is another horror book i feel like it's a lot of horror on this list i'm picky when it comes to horror but anyway <laughs> this one is the headless boy and this is supposed to be one of the best haunted house books but i read this in a month where i don't remember what else i was reading but this one was just dark i think i was reading some other darker themed books and this one was little depressing it's about this couple that loses their unborn child and you know the wife is going through a lot of grief and then she decides to mess around with some spirits and stuff and 
I don't know what happens because I didn't get that far. The grief part of it was just too much for me. It was just like I said, it was just depressing and I just didn't want to read that. I still don't think I do. So I'm not going to force myself to read nothing. Reading is supposed to be fun. That's how I do. So we're DNFing. I did DNF on page 45. I originally said I paused it, but like I said, I'm not gonna be forcing myself to read these darker books if it's not for me. So I have since DNF'd it. And I got pretty far, 45 pages, so I think I know it's not for me. In July, I also only had one DNF. So I was like, oh, I'm doing good. We only got one DNF here and there. This one was supposed to be a buddy read with Nikki from Dark Between Pages. And I started reading this one. I was like, I'm gonna have to let her know this this ain't gonna work. And I'm speaking of Black Heart Boys Choir, another horror book. <laughs> this one's supposed to be more cosmic horror. I have not had good luck with them so far, but I'm still trying <laughs> because I prefer more unrealistic things with my horror. But anyway, this one is about this boy whose dad has a piece of unfinished music that he leaves behind when he dies. And the boy decides to finish this music, but it basically like possesses him. I didn't get that far because the main boy, main character story was not likable. He was just mean and he hated everyone except one person, one friend, and he even talked mess about him. And then everybody he encountered, he would have these thoughts of what he wanted to do to them or what he wished would happen to him. And it was just like, I, it was once again, dark. I just was not enjoying it. It's not my kind of thing. I don't, it's not where I like to go mentally. So I DNF'd it at 17%. And like I said, I had to message Nikki and I was like, I, I can't do this. Sorry, sorry. Now, let me just say disclaimer, even though I shouldn't have to, we should know by now, reading is subjective. What doesn't work for me may work for you. So you know how this goes. Don't take it personal. And if you do, don't leave nothing in the comments. Go on about your business. So as I said a little bit earlier, June is my birthday month and I was like, in June, I'm gonna read all books that are gonna make me happy. I'm gonna read what I wanna read, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> They didn't make me happy. <laughs> Not all of them anyway. So I had two DNFs in the month of June. The first one was an anticipated thriller. I don't know why. This year in 2021, I was disappointed by all the thrillers that I read. Well. Maybe not one, but I was disappointed by most of the thrillers I read that I was anticipating. But this one is by an author that I had read another book of his and I loved and I'm speaking of The Silent Patient. So this book is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, Michaelides, however you say it. I did not enjoy this one. I love The Silent Patient and that one was a psychotherapist investigating a murderer talking to this woman who was supposed to have murdered her husband. And so this one also dealt with a therapist. So I was excited. This one was about this woman, like I said, who's a therapist and she goes back to the college campus that she used to go to, but her niece now attends the school and her niece's friend is murdered. She goes there and starts looking into things. And there's supposed to be this guy on campus who's a professor that has this group of girls that follow him around. They call themselves the maidens and he's the number one suspect. So anyway, I was intrigued talking about it now. I don't know why, but anyway, I did not like the main character, a the theme of this right now. I did not like her. She was nothing like the therapist in The Silent Patient. She was all over the place. Her husband died. She kept talking about him too damn much for my liking. And then she shows up on the campus. She's getting involved with police business when she's not a police officer. And I don't understand why she was on these crime scenes. I just, whatever, like I said, DNF at 17%. Didn't that DNF? Mm, Black Heart Boys Choir 17%. That must be my thing. Mm. Then we had Death by Dumplings. This was the first cozy mystery that I tried of 2021. So far, not the best luck, but this is another one I heard so much about, so many people loved, and so I decided to give it a chance. I was like, you know, I'm gonna sprinkle something cozy. That should be a good, easy read in here. This one is about a woman whose family owns this Chinese restaurant, and it's in like this little shopping center, and the owner of the shopping center, he's not the nicest person, from what I remember. May not be right, but anyway, um, he gets lunch from their restaurant every day, but on this particular day, she delivers lunch to him and he turns up dead. And it's supposed to be that he had a dumpling with some shrimp in it or seafoods of some kind. And everyone knows he's allergic to seafood. So it's like, you murdered him. She's the number one suspect. And the murder happened pretty early on. So I was happy about that. But after the murder, it slowed down too much for my liking. It was too cozy. 
<laughs> I needed some more mystery action. There was not enough of that. It was just too much talking her, talking to her mom, talking to her friend, going to the guy who died, going to his house and talking to his family. It was just too much talking. I wanted more mystery. And then the romance that was starting to happen with her and the cop, which I understand is a thing with cozy mysteries. I don't like that. So yeah. DNF, unfortunately, on page 57. And she actually has a new book coming out that looked intriguing to me, but I was like, don't do it. Don't do it. You already know you ain't like the other one. So let's move on. Then in May, I had two DNFs. I had the most in April. I actually, my video, I put it in the title. I put it up here. But anyway, I'm skipping ahead. In the month of May, I had two DNFs. Unfortunately, the first one was my first ARC book. <laughs> my first ARC copy, Hush Little Baby. I was contacted by someone who works for the author and I was so excited because I was like, you know, brand new still. I'm still a new booktuber, but I was really feeling brand new then. And I was like, mm, this is a domestic thriller. It's not really my thing, but I'm gonna try it because it said some things. It seemed like it was like a gaslight situation. So anyway, I'll tell you a little bit. Supposed to be about this woman who's pregnant and she's separated from her girlfriend or wife or I don't remember, but things start going missing in her house or being moved and she thinks somebody's messing with her, but she doesn't know if it's her ex. And then she's also part of this mom group and they're like got secrets and stuff and she doesn't know if it's one of them. Like I said, I don't fully really remember. Once again, wasn't here for the main character. And it was just too, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just like the ladies got together and they're, you know, talking mess and then like gossip and stuff that I don't care about. And then she went to her GYN appointment and her woman, her ex shows up with her new woman and she's sizing her up and talking mess about her. I don't enjoy that kind of stuff. I don't enjoy it in real life. I'm not the kind of woman that just loves talking about other women and gossip and all that. It's not my thing. If you do that, by so that was a wrap for me on that and i felt so bad because like i said it was an art copy but i dnf'd it at 25 percent, and that taught me i'm not doing art copies anymore if i want to read a book i'll just read it on my own next we have the infamous i'm thinking of ending things by ian reed i have talked about this several times basically i just was not here for the story it was supposed to be about this couple going to visit the boyfriend's family, but the girlfriend wants to end things in the relationship. And it was just too much talking. They were in the car, talking in the car, and she would have flashbacks of how they met and other things that have happened to them. I just did not care. And people said this is like one of the scariest books. It was not scary to me at all. I ended up looking up spoilers to find out what was gonna happen. And when I found out what the twist was, I was like, okay. Hey, I know so many of you love it, but it was not for me. And I DNF'd it on page 77. So I almost got to 100 pages, Lord, I got pretty far. That says a lot. And in April, I had the most DNF's because I tried to read a bunch of new releases. These were also on my anticipated releases video and they did not work for me. First up, we have the project, put it here. I DNF'd it on page 16. This was supposed to be a book about cults. I didn't get that far. It was two POVs between two sisters, two young teens, whatever. I didn't care for them, didn't care about the story. So I DNF'd it. Then we have, what, Big Teeth, a fantasy horror. I was intrigued, but the first part of it, once again, YA, both of these are YA. It was too young. I just wasn't into it. Didn't keep me interested. DNF'd on page nine, ouch. Then we have Shelter for the Damned, a horror book. That I was excited about. It was supposed to be like a Stranger Things type of thing. A group of friends that stumble upon this house that's supposed to be mysterious, haunted. We don't know. Things happen in this house. I don't know. Didn't get there. This was more of a coming of age story. It was too much about these kids and them going to school and then their home life. I didn't get to anything spooky or creepy. I just wasn't interested. Didn't hold my interest. So I DNF'd it on page 33. And then also in April, another group read that did not work for me. Neuromancer, a sci-fi book that people said is like the standard or the template, the blueprint for a uh, cyberpunk, the cyberpunk genre. And I now know that ain't my thing. At least I don't think so. I just did not understand this book. You just get thrown in. I didn't know what was going on. There's a lot of terminology that I didn't get. My daughter's into cyberpunk stuff, so I went to her. She explained some things to me, but it wasn't enough. And then she also looked at it and was like, yeah, this is a little bit confusing. I was like, if you're saying that, you know it ain't working for me. So 
I was supposed to be reading this as a group read with Steve from Steve Talks Books and Stuff. It was on his channel. Once again, I had to message him and be like, Steve, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> and come to find out when they did the live show, a lot of people DNF'd it and or didn't understand it. So I didn't feel so bad, but I just couldn't pull through. I DNF'd it on page 16. I'm surprised I got that far. And before we get to my one book I DNF'd in January, because it is one that so many of you love, and I did not. I have a couple that you don't even know about because I didn't get that far with these books, so I never mentioned them. It was more like I read a preview, but I'll tell you about them now. And I tried the guest list twice, twice. When I first got into booktube in September of 2020, I tried the guest list, wasn't my thing. Then I decided to pick it up again in 2021 because I still kept hearing so many people talk about it. And I was like, this just ain't for me. Once again, I don't care about thrillers that have to do with relationships, that kind of thing. This one is about a wedding party to get stranded on some island and all these secrets and somebody turns up dead. I didn't care. There's all these POVs of all these couples and I just didn't care. It's not my thing. I know some people love it, but again, domestic thrillers, not my thing. And then Good Neighbors, another new release that came out in 2021 that I was looking forward to, but I should have known, not my thing because it has gossip. <laughs> it's about a neighborhood where, you know, everybody's in each other's business and then a sinkhole appears and a child goes missing and they start talking mess about each other and who, what happened to the child? I don't know. I didn't get that far. I wasn't here for the gossip and it was like people just looking down on other ones because they don't have money or they don't dress nice. I don't like that. Don't like it in real life. Don't want to read about it. And in the very beginning, it had a map, a diagram of the neighborhood and who lives in what house. Mm -mm. I'm not good with names, so this was not going to work for me. But anyway, I don't even know where I stopped. I didn't get far, like probably three, four pages. Same thing with guest list. Guest list, I think I read like two chapters, but anyway, no. And then last but not least, in January, I read or attempted to read Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. This one is so beloved in the horror community, but it did not work for me for more. I found this book to have a major issue. I was so excited because it's about a bunch of horror writers that go to this house that's supposed to be haunted and they have to stay there and it's all filmed and whatnot. And the first author's point of view we get, he's a professor and I was really into his storyline because he teaches like horror, some kind of horror class. So I loved it. Second POV was this author who's a woman and I did not like her. She was just very, she was supposed to be tough, but she was not likable. She was just not nice. And the way he wrote her was a little bit sexist. She was walking around topless or whatever and talking about all she likes to do is write and have sex and eat or something like that. And it was just like everything about her was described that had to do with her body or her looks. And I wasn't here for it. I actually gave it two chapters of her. So I think I got like three, four chapters in. And by the second chapter of her being described this way, I was done. I went on Goodreads. Other people had the same thing to say. Other people said that he also had an overweight character that he didn't write in the best way. So I was like, I'm glad I DNF'd it. For those of you that liked it, okay. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. God, this is the third time I have tried to shoot this video. So oh, I finally did it. All the books I DNF'd in 2021. I wonder how many I'll have to talk about in 2022. We shall see. So feel free to let me know in the comments how you feel about DNF in books. Do you do it? Do you not? Whatever. And if you DNF'd any of the same books I DNF'd or if you love them, whatever, let's just have a talk in the comments. And if you don't have anything to say, you can leave me champagne glass emoji or a sad face a black heart if your heart is broken broken heart <laughs> those things i'm i'm here for it and if you have not subscribed subscribe to my channel we have fun here i think and i think that is all oh you can always check the description box i have things down there such as ways you can support my channel all that good stuff so until next time, snuggle up in your hideaway with a good book, better than the ones I talked about. <laughs> Unplug as much as possible. Be kind to all kind, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.